Let's make some soup! Hello everyone, my name is Lisa and I'm the Big Vegan because I'm Vietnam Vegan and today we're gonna make some soup! So every year for my friends I generally throw a thing called Friendsgiving and I'm having a soup bar instead of like a general Thanksgiving sort of thing. So for Thanksgiving last year I made this seitan roast which was super super good and the general like ma uh, mashed potatoes um, stuffing, like general Thanksgiving fare, but this year I wanted to like switch it up. I kind of wanted to do a hot pot one, but I think I invited too many people to do hot pot. So I'm gonna do a soup bar. So I'm having four different kinds of soup. If you didn't know this about me, I freaking love soup. Noodles, soup, pureed soup, stews, like I'm all about that soup life. I don't know what it is. Soup is just like a perfect food. It's one bowl. You can have like crunchiness, you can have pure silkiness. Well, earlier at the beginning of the year, um, I had intended to write a soup ebook to be released now, but clearly that hasn't happened. I've been dealing with a lot of stuff. I don't know what it is. I've been holding out on a lot of soup recipes, but don't you worry, as I'll be making these soups today, I will be filming them for you to enjoy and the recipes will be on the blog. A lot of you have been asking me to make uh, pressure cooker recipes or Instant Pot recipes. I'll have to say, I like the Instant Pot. I think it's great. I'm definitely gonna be using it for Saturday to like keep this food warm and stuff like that, but what I find is it doesn't get the same sort of flavor that you would on a stove. When you pressure cook it, there's no like concentration of flavors that happens. So only specific kinds of soup I find taste good in a pressure cooker. So soup like this, where you just basically want to like blend all the ingredients together, that's where it's fine. But I made chili in it once. I made this other soup that I, um, I'll be making for you guys in it. And it just like, it just didn't have that like concentrated flavor that I like having, that like caramelized stewed flavor that you get when you cook it on the stove. That's why I haven't been experimenting a lot with the Instant Pot because like, I just don't love the way things taste afterwards, but it is really convenient for like making beans. So we're making what I call orange soup today. No oranges, it's just the color orange. So today I have, um, a whole butternut squash that's chopped up here. Uh, I bought them from Costco, so I had two. I also have some leftover carrot. I would normally use a little bit more carrot, but this is all I got. So this is about one and a half carrots or about like two medium carrots chopped up. And then two pretty hefty sweet potatoes, like almost as much sweet potato as uh, butternut squash. Normally I don't add this much, but I just had them, so I figured I might as well. This is gonna be a pureed soup. Pretty simple, pretty easy. So let's get cooking. Saute. It took me a while to figure out how to turn this on. You just click it, there's no on. It's just, you just click the mode and then it's like, oh hey, okay, activated. Let's start off with a little bit of oil. I'm gonna start with, with uh, one table, no, let's do two tablespoons of oil. Uh, you don't have to use oil if you don't want to, but I just find fat helps carry flavor throughout the soup, so. That's what we need. I've got two medium red onions here. You don't have to use red, I, they're going off, so I decided to use them for the soup. Red is actually better for fresh applications like because it has more of like a zingy flavor. We're just gonna cook this. Red onion. And then we're just gonna give it a little stir. When I was in university, soup was probably one of my favorite things to make because it was really easy um, and really cheap to make. All of these ingredients together probably cost about like $15 and you can make a lot of soup out of this. I'm actually wondering if this is big enough pot for everything. It might be a little small, it's okay. I won't use all the soup potato, I'll use it for another soup. It's cool. Soup is a really good way to save money or uh, to stretch your dollar because a lot of these foods can be bought sort of like in season, adding water, adding flavor, um, adding other ingredients like lentils or beans kind of helps make these stretch out more. We're just cooking down the onion just to get some more of that concentrated flavor. And boiled onion is just not as flavorful as sauteed onion, you know what I'm saying? All right, so we're gonna add a little bit of garlic. I'm not gonna use all of this. So I'm gonna use about a tablespoon, two. <laughs> Let's say three or four cloves of garlic, okay? You just don't want those to get fragrant. And then we're gonna add the spices. Spices! All right, so we're gonna add a lot of spices because that's where your soup gets the flavor town. So this is one tablespoon of onion powder, a one tablespoon of garlic powder, ooh, a whole teaspoon of cumin. Flavor town. So you're just gonna saute this to get those spices cooked up a little bit. And we're also gonna add some bouillon paste. This is one tablespoon. So this is just concentrated uh, vegetable paste bouillon stuff. Uh, if you just wanna use your own homemade stock, do that. I'm just gonna add a little water just to deglaze the bottom here. There's a bunch of it was sticking to the bottom, and I wanna, you know, make sure you get all that flavor. I 
helps things from burning and sticking to the bottom anyway. So we got buckets of flavor. We're gonna add our butternut squash that I've cubed and peeled. So I don't think I can fit all of this in. Can I? Oh, so I can. So whole butternut squash. We're gonna add the carrots. And I was gonna add a lot more sweet potato, but it seems I don't have any room. So we're gonna add about a cup Maybe one normal size sweet potato. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna cover this with water. The thing that I've learned from the Instant Pot is that you wanna use less water than you think because it doesn't cook out like it does on the stove. So we're just gonna cover this with water. So you just fill it to the max line, make sure everything is pushed under water. So you wanna make sure that you leave extra room on top because uh, you need both water and air to uh, activate the pressure cooking. We cover this bad boy up. Uh, put it to sealing. And then we do soup. Let's do 35 minutes. It's probably fine on 30 minutes, but I'm just gonna do 35 just in case. Once this hits pressure, then it's gonna, the timer's gonna go 35 minutes and then it's gonna naturally release too. So people say that you can cook stuff in like 35 minutes, but it actually takes longer because it needs to heat up to that point and also needs to naturally release. Or you could do the pressure, but even then it's still like another five minutes to like let all the pressure come out. So I feel like you need to add like an extra 20 minutes to whatever time that you have on top of there because it's just like false. Uh, and if you want to let it naturally release, then it's like another hour. I don't know, that's just my experience, but yeah. So I'm gonna let this cook and do its thing and uh, I'll see you when it's done, bye. Okay, so we're back and uh, I'm not gonna lie, I actually kind of left this for like two hours. So let's see what it looks like. Oh, she looks hella cooked. Everything looks super soft, ready to go. So let's go to blending town. So this is my handy dandy stick blender. Uh, you can pop it in a actual blender if you want to, but that takes effort and care and it's just easier if I have a blender. So you can't really over blend this. And if you cooked it down correctly, everything will be super blended down. I didn't really add that much salt before this, so it probably will need quite a bit of salt, but we'll see. You know what, it's not that bad. It's like pretty bland but flavorful because there's a lot of veggies in it. So I'm gonna add a whole teaspoon of salt. This is kosher salt. There's a difference between kosher salt and table salt. Kosher salt is like there's bigger flakes and it's not quite as salty as table salt is. I tend to like kosher salt because I feel like I'm adding more, but it doesn't like over salt things. It's like easier to like overdo it with table salt. The benefit with table salt is that it's iodized. So a lot of people lack iodine in their system and it's like pretty, important for people, especially if they're pregnant. So there's nothing wrong with iodized salt. And add a little bit more salt. I'm also gonna add a tiny bit of cayenne. I just feel like it needs a bit of kick. So a quarter teaspoon. Don't worry, it's not gonna be too spicy and you can totally leave this out if you want to, but I just think it's good to add a bit of spice. Leaves you wanting more, you know? Oh, it's so silky and delicious looking. Heck yeah. It's still kind of bland. I want to add more flavor. I'm going to add some more of the vegetable bouillon paste. Just a titch, like a teaspoon. I think it just needs a little more amping of flavor. So we'll stir that in. Actually, you know what? I'll blend it in. So a lot of people tell me they don't know how to fix things that don't taste quite right. You get a feel for it. Add... Wow. Uh, <laughs> just a moment, please. I can't believe I just did that. So mad at myself. There we go. There we go, there's Flavor Town. I'm gonna add a little crunch, a little pumpkin seed. Just a little on top like that. Good, good, good. A little black pepper, you know? Can't go wrong with that. All right, there we go. Let's go to Soup Town. Oh, it's so velvety and light. Mm. You can barely taste the sweet potato, <laughs> probably because I didn't use that much. But I like how light it is. Mmm. Mmm. Oh my god, this tastes like fall. A little bit of bread, a little bit of butter. Vegan butter, of course. Mmm. Oh my god, that's so good. 
Oh, butternut squash soup, you're just too good. So there you have it, soup. Make yourself some soup. It's a good old time. I like to serve um, cooked up seitan too, like sauteed when it's like a little crispy on top because it adds a little more like oomph to it. If you want to add more like heft to the soup instead of just having it like a light puree soup, you can also add lentils or quinoa um, and that'll add a little bit of carbs a little bit of fiber, a little bit of protein. I like using red lentils because it blends in pretty well, but you can use whatever lentils you want. You can even use like baked lentils, so you can like cook up lentils and then like kind of bake them until they're crispy, like little croutons. Just sprinkle it on top, that sounds super good. Oh my God, I kinda wanna do that now. But yeah, I'm sure everyone has their own rendition of butternut squash soup. Let me know how you like it. Do you like to add a little cream, a little um, coconut cream or a soy milk to add a little Yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, um, enjoy me spilling stuff all over myself. It's a good old time. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like, comments down below. I always love reading your comments. They make my day. And subscribe if you like more recipes like this and videos and all that jazz. I'm gonna get a crick in my neck. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you have a delicious day. Bye. Um. I didn't plug in. <laughs> I've been like kind of going off coffee and I've been drinking black tea instead, but I think, I don't know, my body just like, it still wants the caffeine. Anyway, we're just gonna let that, you know, cook and do its thing. So I'll see you in like, eh, half an hour. Meanwhile, I'm gonna cook another recipe and I'm gonna change my shirt, but you're not gonna know that. Ha ha ha. Okay. Okay. Wah! Wah!